Hello, this is Brent Harris. Welcome back to my living room. Thanks for joining. I uh, really appreciate it. It's good that you're here. So, the basic gist of what I do as a coach is I work with people who suffer from a, a certain disparity between where they are and where they want to be. And, uh, and in particular, my focus is on this, this concept of inner potential, the potential of a person's life and manifesting that potential. Because there's a number of us out there who, there's like a lot of stuff they want to do, a lot of stuff that we feel like we're capable of, and sometimes panic, it's like there's not enough days in the week and not enough years in a lifetime to accomplish all these things. And then that kind of leaves a person with a fear of like time constantly dwindling, constantly running out. And there's like, oh my God, I waste all this time and this constant sense of time being wasted. And then that kind of creates a certain anxiety. And, and then we go back from anxiety to depression and back and forth and back and forth. And, um, and so that, I mean, as I described that, you can bet your bottom dollar that's something that I've been through. And, um, and so... And so what I found is that there, that a, a person, if left to their own devices, a person very naturally and very spontaneously actualizes their very, very highest potential. Um, but along the way, we we're sometimes given faulty ideas, wrong ideas, hindering, hurtful, harmful beliefs that, that manifest as difficulties and challenge and struggle later on. And and the extent to which we can remove these impediments, these mental impediments, is the extent to which we can just flow easily and naturally in the right direction. And when we do that, there's still there's still kind of fear, and there's still you know moving outside of the circle of comfort, and it can still be scary. But but there's also a deep sense of stability, and uh, and a deep sense of being on your your purpose, being on your path, and being fulfilled, and knowing that everything is happening with a sense of excellent excellent timing even, I dare say, divine timing. So the key point to remember again and again and again and again and again is that your reality and your experience is created to a large extent by your beliefs about reality. So, and your, and your experience of yourself is created by your beliefs about yourself. So for example, if you believe that you are, if you believe you are unwell, if you believe that you are weak, if you believe that you are undisciplined or inconsistent or that you are lower than other people, then what will happen is your natural, very, very powerful creativity will be filtered through these beliefs and they will manifest themselves as your reality. And then what happens is that that reality, that reality like emerges for you to see. And you're like, ah, like, you know, this is, this is truth. This is what reality is like. And then, you know, somebody like myself comes along and says, no, 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 no. That, that's not reality. It's just what you created. Then, then you may defend it. You may fight back. You're like, no, 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 this is how it actually is. And then the ensuing conversation begins. But if you were, if you are willing, the extent to which you are willing to question your reality and, and, you know, despite being faced with physical evidence of what's going on, that is the extent to which you can reclaim power and influence over the course of your life. So that's the main message that I like to offer. So this is uh, this video, as I'm making it for you now, this is, I believe, my fifth attempt at making a video for you because, you know, what I do is I, like, I'll start a video and I'll go about three minutes in and I'll be like, ah, uh, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't know what I'm doing and then I'll, you know, I'll kind of cancel it and throw it away and discard it and start again. And nevertheless, I, what I find is that every time I make one of these incarnations, to potentially give to you. So, you know, hopefully this is the one, number five is the, the lucky one. Um, I feel compelled to talk about this concept that I've been learning about lately called the ground of experience or the ground of consciousness. And, um, and so this is an idea that I got from Adi Ashanti with whom I am now enrolled in one of his courses. And Adi Ashanti is a, basically a speaker on the subject of spirituality and enlightenment 
and personal liberation. And he's a really, really cool dude. And he's a dude of, of very, very, very deep, deep realization. And I sincerely hope if this is the kind of thing that you're interested in, I hope you go check him out because uh, uh, he's awesome. And uh, so he said something very evocative in one of these lessons as he was guiding us to experience fully the, or if guiding us to experience um, the, uh, the ground of, of consciousness. And so, and so roughly when we talk about this, what we're talking about is the very, 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 very deepest level of realization. The, the level where it's, he describes it as a, um, and, and my experience of it so far is as, it is just, um, it is the ground of your own psyche. And it is, it is the ground of your own consciousness. And it is, it is, it is absolutely unfathomably deep, deep emptiness that is, that is totally dark and totally, and totally at the very base of everything. Um, I see it as uh, analogous to the blanket in, from the movie I Heart Huckabees. If you've ever seen that analogy or that movie, there's an analogy where, you know, it's like somebody takes a blanket and says, all right, here's, you know, here's the fabric of the universe. And, and he puts his hand through the blanket. It's like, you know, you know, here's you and here's me and here's this and here's that. And it's all the blanket. It's all the same stuff. And so that's that's probably exactly it with the only with the only difference being that I would argue that the, the absolute ground, the unmanifested ground is it itself, what it is, is consciousness. It is the one undifferentiated consciousness that comes into form and becomes, say, me or this this blazer that I'm wearing or my phone or or you or, you know, you know, uh, an apple or, or whatever it is. It it comes into form as all of these things. And and so and so you reside at the very center of, of, of your body and your personality and your emotions and your, your thoughts and your career and your life and family and everything. You reside at the very, very center as this consciousness that I'm describing. And you're garbed in all of these objects. And, and, and the key when, when they talk about, you know, coming out of suffering and coming out of anxiety and depression is to realize that objects are just objects and all objects do the same thing, which is that they come into your experience, they come out, they come in, they come out, they come in, they come out, they come in, they come out. Either they're born, born and they die or they're given and then they're taken or, you know, whatever it is, created and destroyed. But the subjectivity remains and, and everything returns to the subjectivity. This is also, I believe, what is being described in the Tao Te Ching when, when Lao Tzu talks about the Tao, which of course is another amazing book. So he said something really evocative as he was guiding us down to be deep, as deeply acquainted with the ground of experience as possible. And he said, as you go deeper, into your own psyche, you move past your own psyche, and you start to you start to you start to encounter group consciousness, and cultural consciousness, and societal consciousness, and 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 then and even beyond that, collective consciousness, and and so and what happens is, you you get you get either a lot of really pleasurable experiences and really interesting facts and a lot of interesting material. And, and there's a, sometimes an, a, a, um, a tendency to grip on this. And then sometimes we run into things, you know, experiences, emotions, feelings, objects, you know, mental, you know, ideas that we really dislike that causes fear or pain or suffering or whatever. And we try to push them away. And, and so as we move towards the ground of experience, as we move deeper into realization and into enlightenment, these, these things come up that we either cling to or push away. And, and to do either of these things is to be caught in the maya, is to be caught in the hypnosis of form. It's, it's, it's kind of, it doesn't matter if you're gripping or pushing away, it's kind of the same thing. It means you're, it means you're engaging with something as if it were real, as if, or as if it had um, ultimate importance. And, um, and so what's, what's kind of cool about that is that like, you know, there's that, and then there's this other area of study, which I've been a little bit reluctant to bring up with you, but, uh, but I'm, I'm going to do it because it's really, really interesting stuff. It's called, uh, the study of theta healing. 
And theta healing is this healing modality, energy, energy source centered healing, you know, that, that works with God and, you know, works with these kind of concepts, right? You know, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're down to hear about it, I, I totally get it if not. But, um, but this, this sort of healing modality, the idea is that you, you go in her case up, 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 up all the way to this sort of creator sort of, you can't see my hand, I'm doing this, creator source awareness. And then from there you issue a command and, and for a healing and then the healing is to take place. And the, and the idea is that the healer witnesses it and makes it happen. Now, when, when the process is described of you going up into the creator consciousness, the idea is that you go up, 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 you know, like above the, you take your attention, you know, your imagination, you go up above the, the planet, above the stars, going all the way up and then up outside of the physical universe. Imagine going past lights, going past a gold light, which she refers to as the fifth dimension. Uh, Viana Stibble is the name of the lady who is the founder of this, of this uh, healing modality. And then up into the sixth plane, which is, um, um, which is kind of like rainbowy colored and sort of gelatinous in texture and then and then up beyond that into uh, source energy and so and so that that especially the sixth plane which is kind of what i'm focusing on now this is where she says there are the the laws of the universe and there's absolutely infinite libraries of experience and things to learn about and this is where you get some of these really super esoteric modes of thought such as um sacred geometry and numerology and and kind of and kind of like the, you know stuff like this so i i believe the point that i'm making here okay here's the point that i'm making oh this is nice okay and this is and and this is like I, i've been doing a lot of sessions with all like just tons and tons of intro sessions with people that i meet on reddit lately and um and so I, i've been really um in, in these sessions what i'm doing is uh, i'm constantly re i'm constantly working with these people to hammer down their highest intention their absolute highest priority their their highest aspiration like that which they are striving for striving for beyond anything what is it that they're really going for and um and and really kind of getting people clear on that because the thing is is that if you are not clear on your aspiration if you're not clear if you're not absolutely supremely clear on what your intention is um for what you're doing on in any given moment, in any given activity, in any given day, in any given lifetime, then, then you can't make it to the very ground of experience. You can't, or, or, or rather it's not that, but it's like you, you get mired by other things. You get lost along the way. You get too easily hypnotized. You get too easily thrown off course you get lost in the woods and and then and that's how you find yourself getting mired with all of these all this information and all these options and all this content and and all in all these people putting their agendas on you and you kind of end up like like a ship without a rudder in the perp in the case of theta healing the idea is that you go you go past all the data and all the and all the characters and everything that you would encounter as you move to the very to the very absolute most sacred most divine divine locale in all of experience in all of experience you will only get there if your intention is absolutely uncompromisingly unilateral unidirectional going toward that thing that is how you'll get there if you if you are susceptible to at all to being pulled on a side quest than you will be. But if your intention is clear, then, oh yeah, if your intention is clear, then you get to draw on the power of the un unmanifested. Because remember, the unmanifested realm is what you are. It's not other than you. It's not something else. It is you. So as I speak to you, I am addressing 
the unmanifested in you. Furthermore, it is the unmanifested in me that is addressing the unmanifested in you. And, and there is there is a waking up that is occurring as we have this conversation, a waking up out of form. You are realizing, I believe, as we're having this conversation, that you are not all the objects in your consciousness. You are the consciousness. And when you know this, you it's almost like you have more authority to, to create. You can create more and you can command more. You can command the power of the, of the cosmos. In, in the theta healing modality, they work in terms of command. So the idea is you go up to seventh plane consciousness and you say, you know, creator of all that is, it is commanded that I see the way out of this problem. It is commanded that this be healed. It is commanded that, you know, that you um, show me another way. And then you say, thank you. It's done. It's done. It's done. Show me. And then, and then you just you just keep your your perspective absolutely open, and you watch and wait and stay in a state of complete alertness as you witness this command being fulfilled by Source itself. This can only like the power that you have at your disposal is absolutely in proportion to the extent that you disidentify from objects in your consciousness. So what is it that you think you are? So if you want to you know, do this practically, you'd say, okay, what am I? Ask yourself, what am I? What am I? And, and look, at, look at what arises as the answer. Is it your name? Is it your body? Is it your career? Is it, is it kind of like a feeling sense? Is it a sense of self? No matter what it is, whatever emerges as an answer, it's, like a, it's, like a, it's almost like a, a trick question because the answer is wrong. Whatever, whatever, whatever answer emerges is wrong because, because that is an object that you've confused yourself with. And, and, and nothing needs to be done about that. When, when you, when the confusion is, it's like, oh, it's like, oh, wow, there's a sense of who I am, but, but this sense is this sense and I am I, and I think that I'm this, I must not be that because there, there are two characters at play and I am I, that's what I am. I am I. That's all I ever am. I am I. As a final note, there is when you, you know, exploring these kinds of questions and these kind of subjects, sometimes fear arises, which is perfectly natural because, I mean, if you think you are something that is subject to birth and death and you're about to realize that you're not it, like it's, it feels like death. It's like, but, um, and I can't, like what I really want to do is I want to guarantee that you're safe to wake up. That it's safe to, to access the ground of experience, to go up to creator consciousness. And to let go of absolutely everything, if only momentarily, to let go of absolutely everything that you hold sacred. And I'm not saying, and by the way, I'm not saying like do something stupid. I'm saying like you're sitting here meditating and you just let go of everything. There, there, it, I can't, I can't guarantee the safety of that, but I, I can tell you that this is my own exploration. And, um, and I, and I can tell you also that I think it's universal to feel a fear about moving into these deep realms of experience, but also an attraction. And so, and so it might be worth investigating that attraction. and going about it at your own pace. I'm checking to see if I have anything else to say. I realize that like this has been really all over the place and I, I'm aware that I think there's some threads that I've kind of left that I haven't been able to get to. So perhaps I'll get to them in some other time. But uh, the very core of what I came here to say, I think I've said, so that's good. So thank you for being here. Thank you. I, uh, I consider you a friend of mine. I hope it's cool. Um, 
I'm around. If you have any questions, you know, leave a comment. If you have anything you're curious about, I'm here for you. If you want to try getting coached with me one-on-one, -on -one, you know, hit me up for a one-on-one -on -one session. I'll leave a link to my calendar. You can just click through and go to that. I mean, I don't, I honestly, I don't know how much longer I'll be able to do this, like fill my schedule with free sessions because like I'm, I'm starting to realize that I have an upper cap on how much coaching I can do on a day by day basis. So if you're at all thinking about it, uh, please do act soon. And um, in that way, that will ensure that, you know, we can have the chance and um, we'll go from there. Lovely. I wish you all the best. Have a beautiful, beautiful week, a beautiful March and March is ending a beautiful April and I'll catch you later. Bye.